what's up? It's Renee Mija. I'm a musician and sociologist. All right, let's get going. In this tape, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to talk to you about what I call a destroyer level psychopath, and I have met them. I have only met a couple, fortunately, but I am giving this tape kind of as a warning and also to share a little bit of my story. I know some of you may have met people like this as well. So mine starts off with a music industry executive that I met all about 10 years ago. This guy was one of, at one point, the top executives in the country. I'm not going to say the label name right now, but it was one of the top five major labels. And he had worked his way up from an A&R all the way up to a vice president. Okay. This guy was extremely powerful. Actually, uh, top three labels, one of the top three labels. This guy was extremely powerful and had signed one of the biggest bands in the world. If I say what band, you'll immediately know. He signed one of the biggest bands in the world and that was how he was able to work his way up to the top. He also then recruited and got some of the biggest singers as well and took them in and through a &R work, built them up and chopped them and, you know, they did really well and he was able to work his way up the ranks. All right, so I met this guy. He was about 20 years older than me. He wasn't necessarily my type, but he was attractive. Let me explain what happened. This story gets pretty uh, intense. However, I did make it out of that unscathed. But it's interesting how many correlations there are to biblical type of stuff. And we'll get into it. This guy was, I've only met a couple, but if you believe in things such as shapeshifters or reptiles or anything like that, or of certain bloodlines, this was most definitely one of them. Now, I'm not talking about the Ike version where they, the lizards, and no, 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 I'm talking about demonic, all right? So, what happened is immediately I felt his energy when he reached out to me and something felt very off. And I still talked to him anyways because he approached me with a business opportunity. He approached me for an opportunity to be on a new reality show that was going to be a rival to kind of like an American Idol, The Voice, things like that. And he was going to be the executive producer. He wanted to be like the next Simon Cow. And so he claimed that he wanted me to come in because I sing, I play guitar, I write, I do music, I have a lot of experience. You know, he liked a lot of different things about me. And so he said he wanted to meet on a business level. And, you know, if we ended up, you know, he, he did mention that, you know, he was attracted to me. He did mention that he was attracted to me, but he wasn't gonna, you know, we can, let's just keep it professional and keep it business. And, you know, if I decide that I would like to date him or something like that later on, you know, let's just see how we get along and, and things of that nature. Now, we talked on the phone for quite a bit. We probably talked on the phone for about an hour the first time. He called me the next day. We talked for another hour. And he said some really weird stuff, such as, um, I mentioned something like, oh, I, um, uh, read something a press release or something about you on or i heard of you or something like that and he's like you didn't google me did you you didn't google me did you i'm like what what do you mean he's like that would be weird. don't look don't research like he didn't want me to research him which i thought was kind of interesting i'm like oh, i wasn't planning on it but now this guy will lay out a couple of facts so caucasian male blue eyes very stern disposition at this point he was in his early 40s he um was well built, you know, attractive, but the point that I'm bringing up is this is very much about to turn into kind of like a me too story, but not me more so I should say because I, uh, you know, I got away and that was good. When I was talking to him on the phone, I noticed that there was some hot and cold action. It was really weird. He was extremely controlling, he was extremely domineering, and it was mixed with love bombing though. So he would be super sweet, super nice, complimentary, and then all of a sudden attack me or put in little jabs or say negative things. And it was almost like a, a, a match. It was almost like, a, it was very bizarre. And it made me feel drained, it made me feel uncomfortable, it made me feel kind of actually scared. Not scared like in, oh, 
but scared like it and just um, almost like I had to walk on eggshells, right? And so again, this is very common with these personality types that he had. What he maybe didn't know is by the time I had met him, I had already been studying psychopaths for years. I had already been doing a lot of research on a lot of alternative topics. And so when I met him, even though I didn't tell him about that, I was able to see things firsthand that I had only read about. So we go to have this business meeting. He did say it would be in a professional environment. He wanted to meet over dinner, but not like a dinner like that, a dinner like um, a professional dinner. It's common, you do professional dinners, you do professional lunches, and he wanted to discuss. Now, I know that's a little red flaggy. It's a little red flaggy, but this guy, again, one of the top three most powerful record labels, period. Vice president, had signed some of the biggest artists in the world, was considering me for not only just the reality show, but also some other deals. And he said there were other opportunities and things like that. So he wanted to discuss it in person. He had listened to my stuff, blah, blah, blah. I had a really bad feeling about this, but I knew that it would be important for me to go. Okay, this is something I did quite a bit in my research and it maybe wasn't. I don't recommend doing this, okay? Unless you are, I don't recommend doing this. But I went ahead and went anyways, even though I kind of knew. So I go to meet up with him at the restaurant and he was like, you know, text me when you're on the way. Okay. I text him when I'm on the way. Oh, how far away are you? Oh, about 20 minutes. Okay, perfect. He calls me after about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And he says to me, oh no, I can't. Where are you right now? I'm like, oh, I'm about, you know, five minutes away from the restaurant. Oh, 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 you know what? That means you're right outside of my house. My house is just right up the street. It wasn't right up the street. Um, I can't find my car keys anywhere. They're missing. Where are my car keys at? Um, you know, if, is it possible, you know, we can meet up here at my place and we'll just drive over straight to the restaurant. You know, the reservations, I, I've called them. You know, they should be able to move it till 8.30 or something like that. So yeah, you know, we can just meet up here and I'll grab my keys and then we'll go and we'll, we'll discuss what we were gonna discuss. Okay. Now, fortunately, I had a friend come with me and I had a weird feeling about this, so I asked my friend, is it possible that you can, and this is always a good idea, is it possible that you can um, go grab some coffee or something like that? Go grab some coffee nearby and just kind of hang out just for a little bit, just in case, you know, until I get to the, you know, the restaurant or, oh yeah, yeah, no, no problem. Okay. I get up to this guy's place and it was a huge mansion, probably, 20 to 40 million dollars. It was in the Hollywood Hills. It overlooked the entire city. It had glass windows that were, I don't know, probably 50, 100 feet tall. I don't know. The windows were wall to wall. When you go out of the window, there's a huge patio that overlooks all the lights in the city. I mean, it was enormous wealth. To see a mansion like that in person was jarring because I had seen lots of mansions, you know, in pictures and in videos driven by them, etc. But to actually be in one like that, it was like, whoa, this is like, and I'd actually been in mansions before, but this one was very like, whoa. And, you know, he had, you know, pictures on the wall of different things and, you know, this artist and that artist and somebody, he claimed that he had just moved into this mansion then it was kind of like, would you like to get a drink? And I drink a lot during that time. My tolerance was extremely high, fortunately, actually in this situation. So I was like, yeah, sure. And he had said some things that were a little red blaggy. So he poured me the drink and he said, you weren't making eye contact with me the entire time that I poured you the drink. And I was like, um, uh, okay. And he's like, I could have put something in your drink. How do you know I didn't put something in your drink? And I'm like, oh, did you put something in my drink? Well, uh, no, but you know, it's always good to do that. I'm like, this is kind of, it's just, it, he, he was very attackery. That's not a word, but he like attacked me about it. And I thought that was a little, I'm like, uh, okay. I was so uncomfortable. His vibe, like I was so, um, like just his vibe was very like, I was kind of like so uncomfortable with this person that I would go to the restroom and just take a breath and, you know, gather myself because this guy was very intense, very domineering. And he was a mixture between hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold, right? 
And he would at times be extremely complimentary. You know, oh, you have such great this, you do such great that, and super love bombing and sweet, and we should go here together, and we should do this and that together, right? The future faking, I guess you could call it, the idealization, right? And then all of a sudden he would give me a jab, like say something really rude and really negative out of nowhere. And it was just throwing me off. It was like, oh, okay, I'm relaxed now. And then, oh, what, why'd you just say that? What, what, huh? Like, and he would just keep going back and forth. I've noticed a lot of psychopaths do use that technique. It's like they have so much venom and so much animosity. They're just waiting and it's hard for them to hold it back. It's hard for them to hold back that aggression, right? And so I'm gonna skip past a lot of this story right now because I wanna get more into the psychology of it. This is before I actually went to school for sociology, but I already studied a lot about it. And one of the things this guy was really um, against actually was when I said, oh, I'm thinking about going back to school. Oh, you'll never be able to do that. That's what he said, you'll, you'll never be able to do, what? What do you mean I, I can't go back to school? Why, why, why would you say, oh, it's too late. You're, you know, it's this and that. And he was like telling me he had graduated from actually the college I ended up going to. It was the hardest school to get into. I didn't tell him what school I wanted to go to. I didn't think that that was even an option for me to be able to go to that school at the time. I at least just wanted to go to a local college and get a basic degree, okay? But I did say I wanted to go back to school and that, you know, I love learning. Okay, I think it'd be good. Anyways, I didn't go too much into details, but he was trying to tear me down for this. And he was telling me that it's too late. I can't go back to school. There are so many things in this conversation I could break down as far as signs of psychopathy, from the triangulation, to the love bombing, to the future faking, to trying to place you within a competition. All of these different things were going on all at the same time. But what I can say is, pure evil his vibe was of pure evil so as this progresses he tries to get me to go into oh let me give you a tour and oh let's just sit down here and he tries to put me in a very compromising situation well actually he did but i was like well wait a minute um uh let me i i had to it was a situation where essentially i was like uh uh let me go get ready for you uh because this, this guy was very aggressive and oh no no you don't have to do that oh no no i need to go get ready for you and uh i went and i um immediately was like oh uh my ride is here wait what do you mean your ride is here it can't be here oh yeah uh, yes it's actually here but uh i'll uh, see you next time and um you know was able to get out but he was it was gonna turn into a very aggressive situation it did get it could have been really really bad and with someone like this who was a pure psychopath beyond a shadow of a doubt and by the way this guy still is out there and putting up a facade he literally was um i've met two and this is one of them who was a textbook psychopath the exterior image that he presents is so perfectly crafted always smiling always in great shape and he has the dog and oh i'm a family man and you know, I give back and look at me here with this powerful person. Look at me there and I'm doing all these things. It's all fake. He also tried to, he has like a, a collection of, of photographs with different women that he keeps. They do this conquest thing. I'm not going to get into those dynamics right now. But again, this guy was a textbook psychopath. I was able to get away from him. But with someone like this, it was all about power. He wanted to destroy me. He wanted to destroy my soul. He wanted to... Do uh, humiliate me, desecrate me, negative, 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 dark, evil, okay? And so I got away from him and then he called me and asked me, you know, are we still getting together tomorrow or something like that? And I was like, oh, no. And that's when he start, he went in. And that's when it went into this, you know, very vile, um, you know, insulting me, saying all of these negative, terrible things. And I, I knew this was going to happen. So I was just sitting back like, okay, this was on the phone and threatening me. And you're not going to have this. You're not going to, you're going to miss all these opportunities. I could have done this for you. I could have done that for you. I'm so glad that I got away from this guy, but here's the funny part. 10 years later, guess who shows back up like nothing ever happened? Guess who starts stalking my social media pages? Yeah, the same guy. The exact same guy up to the same shenanigans. And you know what's funny? He didn't even change his age. I'm like, huh, 
The rest of us got 10 years older, but you're the same age that you were 10 years ago, huh? Upgraded his photos a little bit, got a facelift. Yeah, be careful. If you get a sense that someone is a psychopath, I do not care what kind of opportunity they are presenting you. A big promotion, lots of money, a marriage, um, whatever they are trying to offer. No, get away from them because it's all a trick and it's all a lie. They are literally like the devil. It's a trick and it's a lie. Stay away from them. And also, not only do you stay away from them, but don't let them try to do this whole shaming thing that they are gonna try to do. They tell you, you're gonna miss out. You're gonna regret it, blah, 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 blah. No, what you would have regretted is if you would have went forward with them. What you would have regretted is going forward with them because nothing good comes out of a situation with these people. It's all a trick, it's all a lie. And guess what? Anything that they would have given you, they would have taken it back and they would have gotten it back. This is very dangerous stuff, especially when you're dealing with industry type of psychopaths. Make sure you know what you're signing up for. But I do lastly wanna mention the correlation between that and the Bible. I can offer you the whole world. I'll give you all of this as long as you bow down and worship me. I mean, this was kind of like a reenactment because psychopaths it's like they try to put God's children through a reenactment of the same scenario. Anyways, stay away from these people. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Like and subscribe and I will talk to you guys later.